Uh, first of all, let me just say uh, good afternoon. Um, I want to thank the uh, TEDx committee for inviting me here this afternoon to talk with you for a few minutes about the importance of service. Uh, let me just say that I am truly humbled and honored to be part of the distinguished list of speakers that you're going to hear from. I also want to give another shout out to Mario, who uh, back in February asked me to to do this and kind of took me by surprise. I think I had just finished speaking at a class and he said, would you be interested in speaking to another group of students? And I thought it was just going to be over at Rush and it was going to be in a classroom. And I've had countless sleepless nights trying to think about what I would say um, that would help you understand how truly blessed I've been uh, in my life. So if I could, I'd like to just take a couple of minutes and, and play a video that will attempt to kind of just share with you my life journey and, and also share with you how helping others has intersected in terms of my uh, professional career as well. So with that, uh, bear with me. This shouldn't take long. Chicago was created by the genius of people with big shoulders and even bigger plans. Their lives have shaped our city. For Terry Peterson, the genius behind his brilliant career was his grandmother, who helped raise him for his first 11 years in Bemis, Tennessee. Her early lessons on people grounded and guided him for the rest of his life. Her words shaped the legendary career of a man whose singular focus on service created unexpected and powerful opportunities to impact millions of lives from every corner of Chicago for nearly three decades. It began with Terry's Neighborhood Block Club and an Alderman's Challenge. Come in, volunteer, make a difference. Although Terry worked far from the city as a gas company meter reader, he found time to spend several hours a week taking constituent calls about neighborhood issues. Pick up garbage, repair a sidewalk, fix a street light became Terry's aha moment. I quickly discovered I could change a person's life with just one phone call, Terry has said. Fast forward a few years, and Terry's community service work led to his becoming the executive assistant to Mayor Richard M. Daly. By 1996, he was alderman of Chicago's 17th Ward. In 2000, Terry became CEO of the Chicago Housing Authority, where he led the $1.5 billion program to transform Chicago's public housing, one of the most historic civic undertakings in recent history. Throughout his career, Terry never stopped finding ways to be a service to people, meeting seniors, working with kids, getting to the heart and soul of the neighborhoods to let people know they had a voice. They mattered. Today, Terry is finding new and powerful ways to be of service to the Chicago community. In 2007, he became Vice President of Corporate and External Affairs at Rush University Medical Center and helped lead the transformation of the near West Side campus. He also serves as chairman of the board for the CTA, the nation's second largest public transportation system. Some 30 years ago, Terry walked through the door of his alderman's office to be of service in some small way. He entered a lifetime of extraordinary public service. When I saw that um, for the very first time, I can't tell you how shocked I was at how God has been and continues to be a blessing in my life. If you had told this little boy raised in Bemis, Tennessee by his grandparents doing segregation that I would have the opportunity to experience some of the things that you just saw I probably would have fainted but as I look back over my life, it dawned on me that all of these things that happened as a result of me trying to help others. I got involved in politics. Let me say this, because I'm going to go off script for a minute. I practiced this a thousand times so I wouldn't get emotional. 
but it's hard to look back over your life and realize what God has done for you and not get emotional. And since I'm telling you my journey, I have to be real. And being real meaning that means that I have to tell you the way it has impacted me. I come from a family, single mom, brother, and a sister. I don't know anybody. We don't have any money. So when you look at that two and a half minute video and you see all the things I've accomplished, the only person I can give credit to is God. And so that's why I get emotional about it. But I got involved in government by answering the alderman's call to volunteer at the office. I was at a block club meeting and I started, although I worked in Glen Allen as a meter reader for NIGAS, I would drive those 25 miles every day and once a week I would go to the alderman's office and answer constituency calls for part four service, city services. And after volunteering in the alderman's office for about six months, the alderman stopped by my home one Sunday night at six o'clock at night and said to me, Terry, would you be willing to join my staff as, C as chief of staff? I ended up working for the alderman for a little bit over four years, working with residents like Ms. Betty Swanson in the 7900 block of Carpenter, Mrs. Love in the 7900 block of Morgan, Mr. Green and Mr. Pratt in the 7300 block of Green. I met a lot of residents and had an opportunity to do, I think, a job that anyone would want to do, and that is every day getting up, trying to go to the alderman's office to help others. But it was in that role that I also met Valerie Jarrett, who asked me, after I just completed my master's degree at Roosevelt University, if I would join her staff as assistant commissioner in the Department of Planning and Development. Valerie, who hired me in 1994, uh, became not only my boss, but my friend and a mentor, and remains so to date. But it was while working with Valerie that she also asked me if I would be willing to volunteer after work to help residents on the west side, near west side, organize, to go to Springfield, to try to get legislation passed to deal with some of the challenges that they were facing in their neighborhoods. And it was doing that three hour ride to Springfield on a bus with those near West Side residents that I met Mayor Richard M. Daly. And a few months after getting back from Springfield, about six months after getting back, I got a call from the mayor's office saying that Mayor Daly wanted to see me. And I went in to see the mayor and he said, would you be willing to join my staff as an executive assistant to the mayor. You can continue to work with residents throughout this city on infrastructure issues, on housing issues, on retail and commercial issues, the things that you've been doing in the planning department, but I wanna know would you be willing to do those things working in my office? And I said, yes, Mr. Mayor. I went to work for the mayor for about a year, and then a vacancy became available in the 17th Ward. And the mayor, residents, as well as my friend, Father Michael Flager, and other first faith leaders, asked me if I would be willing to come back and serve as alderman of the 17th Ward. Now, I don't know about you, but there's no better feeling, no matter how much success you have in your life, than to have the opportunity to go back home and make a difference. And so I took the challenge of going back and serving as alderman of the 17th Ward and working with some of the residents that I shared with you earlier trying to build affordable housing, trying to bring a grocery store to the community, trying to get a pharmacy to, in the community, trying to deal with infrastructure and other challenges that the community faced. And after serving as alderman for four years, Mayor Daly called me again and he asked me to come see him and I went to see the mayor. And he says, Terry, I wanna know, would you be willing to lead a $1.5 billion transformation of public housing in the city of Chicago? And there were two conversations that I had that were very important. One was with a good friend of mine named, he's now a commissioner, Jerry Butler. Uh, for some of the young people, uh, he's known as the Iceman. If you go and Google him and you hear some of his music. And I remember talking with uh, Commissioner Butler and he said to me, he says, Terry, you'll always be able to get a job, but how often will you have the opportunity to be part of history? And then I went back to see the mayor and he said to me, he said, Terry, let me say this to you. He said, first of all, public housing residents are citizens of Chicago first and public housing residents second. 
they deserve access to the same services and benefits as everyone else who lives in this city. And I said to him, Mr. Mayor, I'll take that responsibility. And I led the Chicago Housing Authority for a little bit over six years. And it was after that time that the mayor, after six, a little bit over six years, the mayor called me again and says, Terry, I want to run for re-election. Would you be willing to run my campaign? And I ran the mayor's campaign in 2007. And in May of 2007, I met with the mayor. He asked me, would I be interested in becoming chief of staff? And I said, Mayor, I really want to go out and do something and work in the private sector. I want an opportunity to see if there is a private sector entity that I can work for that believes in things that I believe in that would allow me to continue to work in government in some way, but also be of service to the city. And I had an opportunity to interview at Rush and probably one of the most important decisions that I've made in my 58 years was making the decision to go to Rush. I had an opportunity to interview with Dr. Larry Goodman, uh, Avery Miller, who became my boss and someone today who I consider to be a friend and someone I look up to who's here, Peter Butler. And I ended up in June of 2007 taking on the respond or working at Rush and not only government affairs, but one of the things I recall that Avery said to me, and it really stuck with me, he said, one of the things, Terry, that's obvious is that you want to do something that allows you to continue to make a difference. And I promise you that if you work here at Rush, you won't only be able to do things with government affairs and government affair, but you also be able to continue to be involved in the community and work with the community. And as a result of that, I was happy to be able to uh, help us to form a partnership with Simpson Academy at 1321 South Polina. We're able to build upon the relationship that we now have with Malcolm X. We continue to build upon the relationship that we've got with Crane, and I see Sharon Gates in the back, and Orr, um, Orr High School. And then in 2009, I think it was probably um, May or June of 2009, the mayor called me up again, and he said, Terry, we're going to apply for the 2016 Olympics, and I think we've got a good chance uh, to win it. And I want to know if you would be willing to come and serve as the chairman of Chicago Transit Authority. And I said, well, Mayor, I need to talk with Dr. Goodman. And I went in and I talked with Dr. Goodman. And I told him that the mayor wanted me to serve. And he encouraged me. And that's the one thing that I love about Rush is that it encourages those of us in leadership and management, I would say, to go and be involved in civic activities, to volunteer, to give back, and to make a difference. And, um, I, will be, I will have served as chairman of the Chicago Transit Authority for eight years in October of this year. The point that I'm trying to make to you uh, is this. None of my professional achievements would have happened without me serving in roles that allowed me to help others. One of the reasons that I chose to work at Rush, as I mentioned earlier, is that Health care is very similar to government, and that is that mission of both entities is to help others. Imagine getting up every day, coming to work. I don't care if you're on the management side or you're on the clinical side, but imagine getting up every day, coming to work, and knowing that you can make a difference in someone else's life. And that's what I enjoy about Rush, and Avery was absolutely right. You know, I would be able to do more than government affairs, and, I, and again, I've enjoyed um, doing that. I'm sure that also majoring in healthcare is probably one of the reasons that you chose healthcare because it does give you the opportunity to give back and to make a difference. But, and I know you're busy as medical students. I know the next two years are going to be hectic and I know you've got a lot on your plate and a lot of, that you're going to be doing. But I wanted to say to you, and I know you can't make the commitment today, but I would hope that you would find at some point in your life, something that you believe in, if it's environment, if it's hunger, whatever it is, that you would find an hour, half an hour a month, a way to give back and to make a difference. Because again, as I look back over the 30 years that I've been involved in public service, the one thing that stands out the most for me as I look back over my life and all of it, all of my accomplish accomplishments, nothing would have happened. I don't believe any of those things would have happened if I had not been in roles that allowed me uh, to help others. Uh, I don't know if I've used all of my 18 minutes, um, but I wanted to end on this note. 
I left this quote up here because it's one of the things that I think is so important. It's a quote by Dr. King that says, service is the rent that you pay for being here on earth. And I would hope again, as I said, you don't have to commit today, but I would hope at some point in time in your life that if you really want to be happy, if you really want to experience both professional and personal satisfaction in life, that you would find something that you care about and give up your time and energy to make a difference. And not only will it make you happy, but it will also make this world a better place. Thank you.